If you didn't watch Spongebob as a kid, you didn't really have much of a childhood. It's one of the most popular TV shows of all time, and it was filled with likable characters, great voice acting, and an incredible writing staff. And with the TV show's success comes the movie, and with the movie comes the movie tie-in video game. I played this as a kid after I got it for my birthday, but I've never actually played all the way through it. Until now. The story begins in the calm waters above the town of Bikini Bottom. We start off seeing a slideshow of images from the movie. I guess they couldn't fit video files onto the disc. And then we see the game. Beautiful, right? If you've seen the movie, you'll know it centers around SpongeBob and Patrick becoming men. The game decided to take this very literally, and so the points you collect are actual dumbbells. You don't lift them, mind you, you just absorb them. Feeling stronger yet? No. First level ends at the Krusty Krab, where you collect your first Goofy Goober token. The tokens in the game are kind of like the Shine Sprites or the Stars in the Mario series. You have to collect enough of them to move forward in the game. Goofy Goobers is the restaurant that SpongeBob and Patrick go to during the film. So anyway, SpongeBob goes there to sulk after he doesn't get the manager position at the Krusty Krab. And then obese clownfish attack Patrick with acid breath. Yeah, I don't see that in the script anywhere. I don't know. It's really not here. I'm not sure exactly where I would hope this was going to be, but it's not in the script anywhere, if, it's, if, that, if that was what they were thinking. Whoa, they let kids come here? And they've got these people with brooms trying to kill you. They're not even being controlled by plankton, they're just kid murderers. Eventually we come to a seashell monitor that lets you communicate with Mindy. Which is odd because at this point in the story, Spongebob and Patrick haven't met Mindy yet. So if you didn't watch the film, you have no idea why this blue-haired chick is talking to you. So our two heroes wake up from their rousing night and realize that Spongebob is late for his job at the Krusty Krab. When they get there, King Neptune is accusing Mr. Krabs of stealing his crown, a crime that was actually committed by his competitor Plankton. Spongebob and Patrick agree to journey to Shell City to retrieve the crown and save Mr. Krabs. The next stage has you driving the paddy wagon, which is a vehicle made to look like a hamburger, which Spongebob can pilot because, of course, you don't need a license to drive a sandwich. This becomes one of the two main ways you play the game. There's the exploration phase where you're on foot and the driving portion in the paddy wagon. I personally like the driving bits the most, but that's probably just because, you know, I happen to enjoy racing a bit. <laughs> So now that we've made our way out of Bikini Bottom, we can continue our trek to Shell City, but then unfortunately somebody steals the paddy wagon. And also Plankton's taken over Bikini Bottom with his mind-controlling bucket helmet, so as is the natural progression of things, we have to go knock down some radio towers in the desert. So here you'll see we've got the radio tower design. So we have the radio tower right here, uh, which is connected to the generator, obviously, and then we have the giant red self-destruct button. Uh, now we finally arrive at the Thug Tug, a CD bar where the wagon thief likes to hang out. SpongeBob and Patrick are going to have to sneak in and steal the key back to the paddy wagon before they can advance. So, of course, it's very similar to how the Thug Tug was in the movie, right? You've got the main bar area and the bathroom. So in the game, of course, we have the main bar area, the multi-tiered disco floor, and oh yeah, the underground lava fortress. Why, why does the bar even need that? I mean, where'd they get the money? What's, what's the point of it? I mean, okay, I get it. It's a game, all right? There's got to be a level for you to get through. But why, when they thought of this part of the movie... Did the developers' minds jump to lava platforming? Why? Because it's easy. And why did not stupid? And I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell. I'm gonna give you. It's all about getting the key, right? So why not have a Hitman-style stealth level where you have to sneak in and get the key without being spotted? That would have been cool. That would have been cool. And that would have also made sense. But look, I'm getting off track. This is the part of the game where you hit your first roadblock. And by roadblock, I mean a place in the game where you can't progress until you have enough Goofy Goober tokens. Like, here, I can't progress until I learn the blank smash. I'm sorry, Patrick. You don't have enough Goofy Goober tokens for me to give you the blank smash. Wait, the blank smash? Like, like they had to censor a word there? 
And the move is him smashing things with his butt, so there's not much mystery as to what word's going there. What's this, what's this game rated again? Oh, e? E? Okay, yeah, sure. John! So since I'm stuck here until I get more tokens, I have to backtrack and play levels like the paddy wagon driving that I've already played before. Only now I'm being timed, or maybe I have some rings to drive through. There are also these glowing tiles you come across sometimes that have different mini games you can complete for tokens. There's one where you gotta fight a bunch of people, one where Patrick's jumping on blocks, and one where SpongeBob's a ball. I mean, it's not too terrible, but it's obvious they were just trying to extend the length of the game. Okay, here we go. Almost got it. Come on. No, please. Why is the world so cruel? Okay, I, I, I'm getting it this time. I'm getting it. I did. I, d d so we get Mindy to teach us the, the smash, and then we can finally progress onto the next level, which is for some reason a 10,000 square foot industrial complex. So after we retrieve the key, we have another driving portion, a lame boss fight with a fish, and then we arrive at the undersea trench. In the movie, this was covered over a musical number, so the developers had some creative leeway to work with here. Let's see how they let's see how they work with that. Let's see. I mean, they've done so good so far. Let's see if they can see if they can really get this one down. I'm really excited. I'm honestly like super pumped to see just what they can do. And th and if it disappoints me, then I'm, I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna keep going. But I mean, it won't. It won't because they've done so good so far. They've done so great and. Can this greatness be topped? That's the one thing that's yet to be answered. Plankton has set up a bunch of television sets to broadcast his horrifying messages, such as... Eat at the chum bucket! Now with Krabby Patties! And now, in order to save Bikini Bottom, we have to smash all of the TVs to stop the message from being, being played to the monsters in the trench who aren't doing anything to Bikini Bottom, and that's gonna, that's gonna save it somehow, but I don't know, and... I... Okay, it's a kid's game, I'll stop. We finally make it to Shell City, where SpongeBob and Patrick are riding around in King Neptune's crown on a bunch of floating wires in the air. It's another driving level, basically. But, once you escape Shell City, we can finally return to Bikini Bottom and defeat Plankton once and for all. And so, after escaping the hideous fate that awaited them in the clutches of the Cyclops, SpongeBob and Patrick find themselves standing on the beach, staring out at the vastness of the ocean. How are we gonna get back to Bikini Bottom? I can take you there. What did they do to David Hasselhoff? What did what did they do to him? That's not, is that David? That's not David. He just looks like a drawing. What? Why did they decide to use this? They could have used me. They could have put me in the game and it would have been better. They don't take the screenshots directly from the movie anymore. Now they're these like poorly photoshopped renditions that some intern made. <laughs> oh! Oh, he didn't even get on Frogs! Oh! Oh, that literally is like the picture of Spongebob! Oh! Oh, it's still literally the picture. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, it doesn't even. That's not even like the same art style as the movie. Oh, that is that is the SpongeBob. Oh no, keep that in the, keep that audio. In the so David Hasselbusey takes us to Bikini Bottom, where we finally get to face off with King Neptune. I think that's enough dorky footage. So in the end, I really enjoyed the SpongeBob SquarePants movie game, even though it kind of overstayed its welcome with all of its extra levels and stuff added in. It's still pretty good, and uh, I'm glad I finished it. So I guess now it goes back in the vault. What's the vault? 
Yeah, what is the vault? I have no idea. Why did I say vault? Yeah, what did you say vault? 